Today on YouTube, a bit of a surprise. Funmaster Mike was messing around on the test servers, and look at what we're about to drive. We've got some fun new personality bots you can play down here. You already know you can play Funmaster and Yvette, but you can now play the Blazing Bishop, the Tani, and the Vichy. I'm excited about all of them. Hmm, which one to play today? I'm going to go against Tani. You know, I never play Tani in real life anymore because he beat me in the last public match. But let's see if I can do okay against him in our bot section. This is literally the first time I have ever played the Tani bot. Okay, I'm going to play E4. Let's see, he might actually be talking to me here a little bit. But um, we've got him silenced. What's he going to play? What is he going to do here? Okay, he played e5. Now, if I play knight f3, knight c6, he says, time to attack. Oh, but you're black on move two. Tani, you need to slow your roll just a little bit. Okay, actually, what, what about if I turn the tables, my young friend? What if I attack you? And I'm going to play the scotch gambit. Now, do you know your theory? Apparently, you do. Now, if you take this pawn, it's called the anti-max lang. Does young Tani know that? Ooh. He doesn't. Knight takes looks scary, but after rookie one, pawn to d5 and black can survive. What was your plan, Mr. Tani, if I push? Ooh, you're going to play knight to g4. And okay, well, let's, let's see it. Let's see you play knight to g4, and you're going to have to hold on for the ride. Tani's a fearsome attacker, but I'm doing the attacking here. Okay, so you dropped your knight in. Now, at any moment, I could maybe just try to get my pawn back, but... But can I do more? Now, bishop d5 is interesting because then you cannot play d5 yourself in order to guard your knight. Ah, but you know what? I'm going to play c3. Because if you play pawn takes pawn, queen to d5 might have been a very strong move. Okay, so you play d5 instead. And if I take en passant, you just take back with your knight and you're totally fine. Okay, so I can't do that. I got to play some other move like bishop here. I feel like we're actually sort of transposing into some other line. Okay, so you took, all right. How do I get a bit of an attack going here though? I, I may need to give you one more pawn just to make things exciting. Hmm, let's take this. I wanna get rid of your strong knight. I don't think I have compensation for the pawn here though. I don't think I got enough out of the opening. Funmaster Mike needs to go back to the drawing board to figure out how to play this opening a little bit better. What if I just play bishop here to develop? Hmm, pushing pawns near your king. Okay, that's a little bit interesting. Now I'm just going to move my queen here. and I'm going to think about sacrificing on h6. Hmm, I think I actually did a very recent chess kid video about defending your king with that exact idea. Okay, let's put the rook on the half open file. Nothing bad can happen. Notice I'm not interested in this position in taking the knight because my bishop pair I value quite a lot. I'm going to drop back here. Now the sacrifice is starting to look real. Uh-oh. Senor Tani, if I take twice on h6, are you really defending the checkmate on h7? You could play f5, but then I could take en passant. Okay, now often computers are much better at analyzing tactics, but it's too fun. If I get beat, I get beat, but I'm going down with a bang. Ooh, and Tani did not even take my bishop. He played pawn to d4. Hmm. But wait a minute. If I just take that and you trade knights, then I'm going to play bishop h7 check, discovered attack on your queen. That looked like a little bit of a desperation move on Tani's part. Okay, now I've gone from down a pawn to up a pawn. I still don't think I'm afraid of pawn takes bishop on h6. My queen takes back. And then black has to go through a world of contortions just to survive mate. Um, well, what if I just keep adding? Oh, I see. You're going to take my knight and then take my d4 pawn. Well, you know, making this into a YouTube video, I don't want to play a passive move like bishop e3, even though, even though that may be the best way to go. Okay, I'm going to play rook here. If you really take my knight, which you did, we're just making this exciting for the kids. Um, I, I, I want to bring pieces to attack your king. I just want to checkmate your king somehow. Okay, well, you're about to do something very bad to me. So let's play a little bit of a defensive move. Let's play bishop here. Now, you're not winning my queen with knight takes f3, bishop takes, because my bishop on h6 is still guarding my queen. Okay, you haven't taken my bishop on h6 yet. What? That's good news for me. I, I kind of thought that that was going to happen at some point. What if I just play rook here, though? 
Okay, you play there, but now if I move my queen, your knight is pinned. So let's do that. Where to put the queen? Let's put her here. Oh, you're gonna play queen h3? Ooh, actually. I, I, I halfway missed this move. By halfway, I mean all the way. Oh, knight e2, it's too good! It's too good, I have to take. And now I lose all of my rooks. What a fantastic tactic by Tani. And is it is it the end of the game? Wait, it's actually not quite the end of the game. Because, because of the wonderful things Fun Master Mike does. Please don't sue me for copyright infringement. Okay, wait, if my queen goes there and you play g6, I cannot mate you on the light squares. Tony's talking to me. Do I need help? Give me a second, buddy. I'm not a, a silicon killer like you are. Um, queen here? And then if you play g6, I sack? Ooh, well, you know what? I bet you the choice of which queen square is important. Maybe I want to go here. So if you play g6 and I play bishop takes g6, you cannot play queen takes pawn on e5. Okay, I can't make any more mistakes here. So the, the, the choice of queen move seems a little bit important. Okay, so you play g6. Um, was g5 possible? Probably not. Okay, I still need to see what, what, you, what are you up to here? Can you survive this? King h8? Oh, don't tell me you can survive with King h8. Oh, come on, Tani. Wait a minute. There's still some things happening here. If I play bishop g7 and your king takes, I can play bishop d3, discover check and win your queen. And I think I can find a way for you to not play rook g8 at the end of that. Hmm. I feel like this a forced mate. Bishop h7 I've looked at, but you'll be very happy to play rook g8 and give me one of your rooks to get your other rook to the g-file. So that's not really in my plans. Now wait, if I just take your rook with my bishop and you take back with anything, then queen h3 is mate in two. So if I take your rook on f8, you'll probably take my light squared bishop. And then I can take your rook, and my control of the dark squares looks really good. Okay, so bishop g7, I think, probably wins your queen. Probably. I mean, maybe you could play king g8. But uh, but I think I'm actually going to take. And I'm going to hold my breath that I didn't miss anything. I don't think you can take back, because queen h3 leads to mate in two. Okay, you took that when I was expecting that. And now I take this one. And I'm down the exchange, but my control of the dark squares... I think is really good. Okay, but I'm mating you with check. Okay, you're about to mate me with queen f1, but I mate you one move earlier. Bishop check. And if your king goes to the h file, my queen goes there, and I, I just assume there's a mate. If your king had moved to g8, then queen takes g6 would have led to mate in a couple of moves. Um, okay, I mean, I, I just thought this was mating. Is your king going to walk all the way to d5 or something absurd? Don't even tell me. Ah, uh, you know what, though? Okay, this is actually another case where the choice of queen move matters. I'm going to choose h3, not h4, because that gives me an extra option. So at first I was looking at queen h8. I'm going to hold my finger there really tight to make sure I don't accidentally let go. And then when your king moves to f7, queen was going to check here. Your king was going to move to e6. And if I check here, your king was going to move to d5. And he's getting away. So the goal here is not to let him get away, even though queen h8 looks like it must be the right move. But doesn't have to be the right move. I think queen here and your king is now not getting out. Yes, Tani, chess is life, but I may be getting the best of you here. Oh, wait, can you walk down the board? No, no, you can't walk down the board. I'm not going to let you do that. This is it. This is winning. May in one. Now my pieces feel unsafe. What a fun game. What a fun game. I have no idea how many of my moves were, were correct or poor. Look at that. Yeah, just Mike, not Fun Master Mike. This is a super secret test account. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed my game against Electronic Tani. And uh, pretty soon, you'll be able to play him in our bot section on Chess Kid. In fact, by the time this comes out, it may already be released. And if it's not, well, that's just because we're tweaking things to make Tani that much stronger. Welcome to my world. Let's play a game.